all right welcome again uh, in this video i will be discussing about different uh, panels or the containers uh, to lay out your wpf application there are certain uh, panels available sometimes it is called containers uh, because uh, they actually contain different uh, controls uh, to organize your application uh, for the better layouting so there are actually several uh, panels available in WPF and uh, I will be discussing uh, most of those panels uh, such as canvas, grid, wrap panel, stack panel, dock panel, expander, tab control, group box and uh, scroll viewer so let's uh, start doing that so I have a window WPF window and uh, let's begin with the cam canvas so canvas is a very freestyle uh, container in which uh, you can put any component anywhere uh, you have to decide the place and uh, it will actually it does not reorganize the controls so I will just uh, give it a background color so that we see that these are the borders of uh, this container so let's add some elements in this such as button maybe rectangle and uh, so we can actually arrange them by ourselves and you can see that it actually tells that where this uh, control is placed inside this canvas and we can also uh, decide to uh, uh, have uh, their position in the canvas and we can also see that uh, which which control comes over uh, other controls so we can actually also do that uh, for example so if we have a button over here I can move it like this so it's more like a kind of a, a, a designing tool where we can actually place these components and it actually does not auto arrange the components when I actually resize this uh, uh, canvas so, so you can place anything anywhere in the canvas and you have to reorganize them by yourself but you have a place where you can actually uh, add some controls and uh, it will act uh, as, a, as, a, as a canvas right so uh, this was about the canvas and uh, let's move on to the next one so canvas is a very basic thing all right grid so i guess uh, uh, let's have a grid on the top of this grid so let me give a, a background color to this grid so that we can see the boundaries all right so grid is uh, quite interesting in uh, uh, in wpf where it has columns and rows so if if i i don't need to go to xaml i can actually if i move my mouse pointer on the top over there in a in a grid so you see uh, an arrow sign with the with the plus sign so if i click on this let's say over here you see a line is dropped over there and i can actually select this and i can actually move this and i can also press a delete button to delete this so this is actually column definition in a grid and also we have row definition where we can actually form a kind of grid and we can actually add controls inside this grid so let's do this and create a small grid and let's add for example a button inside this grid so so this is the button and i can let's for example fill this inside this grid and i can actually anchor this so when this grid is resized so these controls will also resize depending on the grid and you if you see this button so this button is at the grid, grid column one so let's let's have another button 
so let's see control C and control V and I will move this over here so this one is at the column one and the row one so that's how we actually use the grid to reorganize uh, to organize our elements and we can also have a reference point over here let's say for example if I want to attach with this column the starting point of this column and for, for the left and the top starting from the left and the top of this uh, specific cell in a grid so I can actually move that it's uh, quite helpful in organizing our uh, components and you see that components actually resize when the grid is actually resized so this is uh, quite helpful in uh, to achieve the responsiveness of your uh, WBF application most of the time it is required that when when we resize our application so actually the, the grid should also resize so let's uh, let's let's do this so this is my grid so I can tell that it, I need to anchor this one with this and if I run this so when I resize my uh, window so that these controls should also resize you can see a canvas over here because it was uh, I just hide that in the in the, in the document outline so when I resize it is actually resize depending upon uh, the size of this application if I resize from here so you see the controls are also resized and also grid is resized because of the anchoring feature of uh, WBF all right so let's undo this all right so this was about the grid i can actually hide this so that i move on to the next control so let's discuss the wrap panel so as it uh, its icon shows and the name is wrap panel uh, did i get this yeah so I actually move this wrap panel to the grid outside this so oops it's actually placing inside and the grid that we have over here so actually I need to move it out like this So actually I want to move this wrap panel to this all right now we are out all right so uh, let's hide this grid and get back to the wrap panel all right so this is the wrap panel and uh, let's have a background color so when I place elements inside this wrap panel let's say for example some buttons control C control V so you see that <coughs> when when I resize this uh, wrap panel so elements automatically wraps uh, around the available space in this wrap panel and when it resizes it actually rearranges. so we can also uh, uh, achieve the responsiveness of this sometimes we are displaying actually some buttons and labels and uh, the text input and the button uh, horizontally so when we say that when it resizes so the labels and the buttons can uh, come down like this we can actually have uh, any uh, container or any panel and we can actually put another panel inside for example in this wrap panel I can uh, I can insert multiple grids and in those multiple grids we can uh, actually have a column definition and row definition and we can achieve its responsiveness so it's all about the designing that how you actually uh, lay out your application and uh, what kind of objectives you want to achieve um, 
and uh, what kind of layout you are expecting from your application so it will actually resize accordingly and uh, if we see some of the uh, properties of uh, this so orientation is horizontal and it's vertical so by default it's these are arranged horizontally but you can also choose to have it uh, vertical orientation so by default it is vertical orientation so when I resize like this so it will be uh, reorganized so by default it was horizontal so when I resize this it will its orientation uh, or the arrangement will become vertical so it will consume uh, rest of the space available by default it will actually organize those components like this and also you see that there is no space between the components so it's all about the components you can uh, decide to have uh, the margins um, or the padding uh, with your uh, components over there so you can actually chain that and you can have a padding let's say for example uh, I don't have an option to edit that so let's add some padding property so let's say 10 10 10 and 10 so we have padding for uh, uh, that component and we can have margin 10 10 10 so now you see that uh, this button has margins over there and uh, uh, we can uh, have it let's say for example so this is uh, left and top so left top right and bottom so we can also have it like this or we can see that left has two padding and the right has uh, sorry margins and the right has let's say five margins like this and top left and top has five margins so it works with the left top right and this is bottom right <coughs> so we can actually do that all right so uh, let's continue with the, the another one so look at the stack model so as it uh, name suggests so it's inside the wrap and so move it outside <coughs> all right so uh, it will stack the elements uh, vertically by default so let's add a button so <coughs> it will uh, arrange the elements and resize element and will put uh, like a stack and uh, this kind of uh, panel is actually useful let's say for example if I want to have it uh, a left menu or maybe I want to have a right menu like this so I can actually stack them <coughs> like this and I can have it vertically like this so by default they are actually vertically aligned and uh, if I uh, paste uh, more elements so they will be actually <coughs> inside this uh, stack panel and uh, they will be organized like this and uh, it will be arranged uh, like a stack <coughs> I can also use the margin property over here to add some margins between the elements uh, if I want to so <coughs> this was the stack panel so I just uh, hide this <coughs> after the stack panel I will be discussing a dock panel so if you are from uh, Windows form background you would be very much familiar with the dock panel so dock panel is actually uh, <coughs> has four sides to dock your elements 
so this is my doc panel it's inside this grid so <coughs> so inside this doc panel if I add some elements so each component has its uh, docking property and uh, we can choose the the direction of uh, the dock where we want to place this content inside this uh, container in windows form <coughs> the dock property is already uh, by default available with uh, all the elements and we can actually dock uh, and these elements so you see that this dock property is over here <coughs> so by default the docking is on the left so let's say for example this is the element I want to dock on the left and when I actually resize it will be actually remain over there and will be docked over there and if I want to change the property to the dock to the top so it will be docked to the top like this so let's say for example just to see the effect I will actually resize this <coughs> so you see that it will be docked over there and will be attached on the top and let's explore other docking options so let's say for example this one is at the top <coughs> so I will make it to the left So this is on the left. Add the button, and uh, it's on the left. I want to make it on the bottom. <coughs> so this is the docking, and similarly, if I want to dock another button <coughs> on the right. if I resize <coughs> so because of docking it actually resizes I need to use the anchor property so that it also resizes from the bottom so I will select this <coughs> and I will resize this and you see that it's resized I will use this as a, as a bottom this so if I resize or the dock or the docking panel is resized it, resize, it will actually resize the components as well so, and I can actually uh, utilize the space inside this so docking panel is actually uh, very much uh, useful to organize your application at the at the top level for example you want to have some uh, menu on the left you want to have a top bar over there you want to have some information on the right that should be displayed depending on the uh, content that you render over there inside or in the middle of this panel and you can have some status bar and something like this at the bottom so whenever you resize your application so everything actually resized accordingly so for the main layout main layouting of your application the docking dock panel is uh, quite useful <coughs> so let's move on to the next one uh, it's mm, it's not like a panel, but it's it it's it's a uh, nice thing in WPF, which actually can contain multiple elements, and uh, <coughs> it it is called an expander, and uh, expander has a grid uh, further inside this, and uh, let's for example have a color over there, and let's add some. <coughs> element let's say for example I want to add a label over here and uh, <coughs> let's say text box this so if I copy and paste this one so expander is quite useful that uh, uh, at uh, as its uh, name states that you want to expand something <coughs> uh, or you can hide something depending upon the uh, the requirement of your application so by default let's say for example the expander would be like uh, in uh, in the expanded form and its direction can be up left 
to the uh, 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 left and right as well so let's say for example <coughs> so expander would be uh, on the right and uh, in this case this is the header of uh, uh, the expander so if I run this and show you that how it looks like in uh, actual running application <coughs> so it expands uh, when I click this or it hides like this right so actually you cannot visualize this so for the moment I will hide this I will actually show all and I hide this and I actually select these I will delete this one and just run <coughs> so this is my expander and uh, if I click on this it actually expands and should show the content <coughs> over there so we can actually use the expander it's uh, quite nice uh, feature available uh, nice control available and we can actually rename this this header let's say for example profile information <coughs> uh, again we can have this expander to be uh, to have on the on the on the downside so if I open this expander actually open and resize this so <coughs> I don't see its uh, border over there so I will let's suppose I will add some color so that I see that uh, the boundaries of this expander <coughs> So this is my expander and I can actually show the elements. <coughs> so let's uh, undo this, bring others. Just show the grid. <coughs> All right, so uh, let's move on and uh, look at the tab control. Again, tab control is very common, and it's also available is in Windows form. So it has actually tab pages, and we can uh, arrange the tab. And you see that in every tab item we have a grid. So we have a uh, we have control we have a tab item it is called tab item in WPF it is called uh, pages in, uh, in, uh, in in Windows form so we have tab control and we can have a tab, tab item over here and it, it has a grid and you know how this how, how actually grid works so if I paste our copied label and text box you can see that I can have a tab item over here I can have a tab item over here and I can have let's say <coughs> these controls so we have a tabs and uh, uh, it's very common in multiple applications for example you have tabs in most of the applications and we can actually uh, have uh, a grid inside this tab and uh, when I run this application and I can see these tabs. So let's select the tab item. I can have multiple uh, uh, multiple panels inside this uh, grid of uh, each tab. So this is my actually tab item. So this is tab one. This is tab two. So that's how actually I can arrange depending upon the requirement layout of my application. <coughs> So another one is the group box. 
so group box is actually very famous and we have seen in uh, many applications group, 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 group box normally has a header on the top and uh, it has a light bo border uh, around this and uh, we can actually have a header name let's say for example I need to select gender <coughs> and I can have a multiple uh, radio buttons inside this and I can or I want to select this gender so in document outline it's in the grid that's fine all right <coughs> so if I want to add some radio buttons so one thing uh, with the with the group box is that group box can contain only one uh, element which means that uh, it cannot have several uh, elements in this so how do we handle this let's possible if I want to copy this radio button <coughs> and I want to paste this one so actually we have an error over here because group box cannot uh, have multiple content so what can we do is we can have a grid right so what about if we have a grid which is actually main <coughs> single root element and we can have a radio inside this grid so we have a grid and we have a radio button and now we can have several radio buttons over here so let's say for example this is male and this is female and uh, is checked is true <coughs> so we can have uh, we can have a group box like this <coughs> let's copy and paste this one and <coughs> so this is our group box let me move it outside so we have group box group box <coughs> so let's move it somewhere over here so that we can see how it looks like so this is our group box and uh, it has a slight light border over there and even it's not that much uh, visible so let's resize or move it a bit towards left <coughs> so this is a group box you see a light border over there you see a, a, a header over there and it's uh, very nice to organize your uh, elements uh, to actually group your uh, element that's why it's called a group box it is also available in uh, Windows form and uh, it's also available in WPF so let's move on and uh, see the last one which is our scroll view uh, as its name suggests that it has a scroll so if the content uh, if the content or the elements uh, increase so it auto automatically shows a, s a scroll so let's have a background color so that we can see the scroll uh, again scroll viewer has a restriction that it must have one uh, element only and uh, we can have actually a grid and uh, we can have this uh, one container which is a uh, grid and uh, inside that grid I can have uh, several more controls uh, let's say for example I can place a button over here and I can actually copy and paste this button I can move this button down like this so So this is a grid and we have a button over here and uh, this button is like uh, outside this uh, wing area and outside this scroll so uh, scroll view so if I run this so you see a scroll over there so so so, so the content is actually increased 
so it automatically added the scroll over there in the, in the top so actually this uh, it's outside this uh, and this uh, this grid <coughs> so let's uh, increase the size of this uh, this uh, grid so you see that scroll is increased whenever I increase the size of this grid <coughs> So button was actually outside the screen that's why we were not able to see this inside the scroll so now if I scroll this I have this uh, element over there so if I have uh, so many form elements and my window size is limited I can actually use this scroll and uh, it has some more options such as uh, to display horizontal uh, scroll bar I can say that visible I can say the hidden so let's say for example uh, uh, make it uh, auto and also make it auto like this so it will actually um, uh, show show you whenever uh, it is uh, required so otherwise otherwise it is um, uh, hidden uh, or you can say that it's always available and always visible so that user can see that you have a scroll over here so these uh, that's all i guess for the uh, for for the panels and the containers so uh, these containers are helpful in organizing and layouting our application and we can design an effective layout and responsive layouts with the help of these panels uh, i think that's all uh, for this thank you